It will surely have happened to everyone to have the urge to go to the bathroom at the worst moment, perhaps during a work meeting, just before an exam, or during a first date. In other cases instead, to avoid going to unfamiliar bathrooms, and maybe even not very clean, you will tend to postpone the moment of defecation until you return home. But what happens when hold your poop for a long time and postpone the bathroom appointment? It is bad for health. What are the consequences? Let's go see it. Feces represent the waste material of our body, which is formed following the processes of digestion and absorption of the nutrients introduced with food. They are made up of 75% water and 25% solid substances, and thanks to the peristaltic movements, they progressively advance along the digestive tract until they reach the rectal ampulla. The distension of its walls stimulates the sensory receptors located on the walls of the rectus muscle, giving rise to the defecation reflex and therefore to the subsequent relaxation of the internal anal sphincter, considered an involuntary muscle. However, if at that moment we do not have a bathroom available, or we are in a situation where we cannot go, thanks to our brain we can prevent defecation by keeping the external anal sphincter closed, as it is a voluntary muscle, and therefore under the control of our will. What happens to our body at this point? We have said that feces are nothing more than an accumulation of waste substances that your body must eliminate, so by holding in your poop, you will not allow the body to get rid of these substances. Meanwhile, the intestines will begin to absorb more and more water from the stools, which will become harder and harder. The first consequence will be constipation. It is a defecation disorder that consists of difficulty expelling stools or a frequency of evacuation less than three times a week. Among the most frequent consequences of chronic constipation, we find the onset of a hemorrhoidal disease. It is a dilatation or inflammation of the hemorrhoids, soft pads of richly vascularized tissue located inside the anal canal and essential in maintaining fecal continence and evacuation. Suppressing the stimulus to defecate for long periods of time can lead to a slowing of intestinal transit and incomplete relaxation of the pelvic floor muscles with a consequent pushback of the fecal material. You may also have other symptoms such as bloating and abdominal pain. Not only that, the rectum muscles are forced to stretch excessively to hold the stool, so it will become more difficult to feel the urge to defecate and therefore understand when it's time to go to the bathroom. This medical condition is called rectal hyposensitivity and indicates the inability to perceive that the rectum is full of feces. The continuous stretching of the rectus muscles leads to their weakening over time and an increased risk of developing fecal incontinence. It is an involuntary loss of fecal material, both solid and liquid, and intestinal gas due to the inability to control or delay the urge to defecate. When the time comes for the evacuation, the feces have become too hard, so it will take more effort to expel them, and you will also spend more time sitting on the toilet. These two factors, combined together, increase the pressure inside the vessels of the anorectal area, favoring the swelling and prolapse of the hemorrhoids. Thus a burning sensation and anal itching can be felt, as well as small blood losses, generally after defecation. In the last video, which you can find by clicking above, we saw what happens when you spend too much time sitting on the toilet and what the consequences are on your health. The continuation of this disorder leads to copper stasis, that is a slowdown in intestinal transit and a continuous stagnation of feces in the rectal ampulla. This is how what is called fecal impaction is formed, that is a hard mass of feces, highly dehydrated, and with a hard consistency like stone, which can no longer be physiologically expelled through defecation. Intermittent cramps, nausea, vomiting, pain, and abdominal swelling, especially shortly after a meal, are some of the consequences of fecal impaction. The latter, as it increases in size, can cause bowel obstruction, a pathological condition in which there is an arrest in the progression of the intestinal contents. If not treated in time, ischemic suffering occurs, with consequent necrosis of the portion affected by the occlusion, with the risk of peritonitis and septicemia, severe infection due to the presence in the blood of certain species of pathogenic bacteria. 
If you continue not to go to the toilet, the fecal mass increases in size and causes an increase in the intraluminal pressure of the colon, which can lead to colitis up to colon perforation. This is a serious medical condition in which a kind of hole, or rather a lesion, forms in the wall of the intestine. Stomach juices, food, or any other contents from the intestines will begin to leak into the abdomen, causing inflammation and infections, which can even be fatal if not treated promptly. How long can you hold the stimulus? This question cannot be answered, as there is no defined period of time. It can be a week, like a month. It is a variable time from person to person, as it is linked to the subject's defecating habits, his diet, his lifestyle, and the state of health of his gastrointestinal system. Just think that in 2010, a 55-year-old Chinese woman with severe fecal impaction showed up at a gastrointestinal clinic after not defecating for 75 days. Up to the time of admission to the clinic, she had not had bowel movements for 61 days, but had abdominal pain, vomiting, and fever. Abdominal radiographs and colonoscopy performed at the local hospital showed abundant stools, fecal impactions, and the presence of several abdominal masses, well palpable and hard, in the left and right lower quadrants of the abdomen. After 12 days of therapy, including enemas and some typical treatments of traditional Chinese medicine, the fecal impaction reduced in size and the woman returned to evacuate normally. In 2013, however, Emily Titterington, a 16-year-old girl from Cornwall in England, died after going eight weeks without evacuating. Her phobia of toilet facilities prevented her from going to the toilet and caused an enlarged intestine which compressed the organs in her chest cavity and caused her to have a heart attack. How often should you poop? According to experts, a frequency of defecation ranging from three times a week to no more than three times a day is normal. Therefore, occasionally holding the poop does not cause particular consequences on health. On the contrary, if it becomes a habit, it can cause some of the side effects we have seen in this video.